Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we'll be taking a look at the Rocky Mounts Monorail 2 Bike Platform Rack right here on our 2022 Kia Sorento. The Rocky Mounts Monorail is a bike rack that checks off all the boxes, has pretty much anything you can ask for in a bike rack. We'll take a look at some different specs, different features, different measurements, but we're going to focus on our Kia Sorento. That way you can see if this is going to be the best bike rack for you, your different types of bikes, and your vehicle. So the very first feature we're going to take a look at is the tilt-away feature. So when your bikes are on there, you don't have to take them off because all you need to do is just pull this blue lever and then just let that bike rack drop down to tilt and it stops at that angle and then you can open up your hatch. So as you can see right over here, look at how much clearance we have between the door, the pedals, and our handlebars. Even if we had the longer regular handlebars, we'd be fine to go into our hatch and get whatever we need. So whether it's our waters, our helmets, our bags, we can grab them real quick without having to take our bikes off. Once we've gotten what we need, we just lift this up and it snaps into place and just like that we can hit the road so very convenient saves you time especially compared to your not as premium bike racks that can't tilt away or your hanging racks where you have to take them off completely if you want to open up the trunk so here this does have a weight capacity of 120 pounds total or 60 pounds per bike if you have your extra heavy electric bikes no problem at all. Also, since it does drop to a tilt, you're not lifting all that weight up at the same time. The way our bike is mounted to this bike rack though, notice how we have two points. The first is gonna be our rear wheel cradle. That secures the wheel. My favorite part is gonna be our front wheel mount. So notice how this secures the bike by just the front wheel. That way, if you have a carbon fiber bike like what I have here, I don't have to worry about actually warping or cracking my frame like I would if I had this traditional bike rack with a clamp. Also, if I have step through bikes, women's bikes, children's bikes, this makes it super convenient because then I don't need to get a frame adapter bar. And once I've arrived at the trail and if I need to take my bikes off, what I need to do is start at the rear wheels. So we have this lever here, just press that lever and then that releases the strap, letting you bring this up. Then I like to fold it up to the side so it doesn't get caught up in our spokes. Then I can go over here to the front. So you're gonna have to hold on to your bike as you do so because once you release this, it could tilt back towards your vehicle. You press this blue button, press that, lift this up, push that out and just like that, you're ready to hit the trails. I'm going to leave this bike over here to the side so that we can take a closer look at the rack itself. First is the rear wheel cradle. Notice how this tilts back and forth. This is to accommodate those different wheelbases. The maximum wheelbase you can carry with this is up to 48 inches. We have this strap. That strap goes around the rear wheel and just secures it there. We have little grooves on our cradles too, our rear and our front ones. That's going to be for a different tire width. So whether you have your teeny tiny tires or your really wide fat bike tires, this can carry those up to five inches. This front wheel cradle actually folds down when not in use. And that way it's all nice and neat. Then we have our front wheel mount. I, to I talked about how convenient this is for different types of bikes. This just secures that front wheel. You can also fold it down over there. I like to bring this actually to the end and secure this underneath the rear cradle just for extra security. That's something you can do. Now, let's talk about how this fits on our Sorento. So notice that it's gonna add a little bit of distance or length to the back of our vehicle. Nothing too crazy though, but let's take some measurements to see exactly how much. I'm gonna measure from our bumper there. We're gonna have the end of the bike rack here and that sits at 32 inches away from the back of our Sorento. Let's say you're trying to back into a, your garage or try to park into a really tight spot, knowing that this is where it sits is going to help you out. Another measurement let's take a look at is ground clearance. So ground clearance is measured from underneath the bike rack to the ground. See where it sits there at 17 inches? Now your bikes themselves are going to sit above the ground at about 21 and a half inches. 
Compare those measurements though from right over here at the shank where it sits at only 10 and a half inches, almost 11 inches there. Ground clearance is important because the hitch here sits kind of low to the ground compared to your taller SUVs or trucks. What's going to happen is as you go up those inclines, like those driveways or those hills, your front's going to go up, your back's going to go down. So this has a shank rise so that your bikes sit higher up off the ground and are less likely to hit it. It's a pretty good height though because then it's not too high where it's hard to lift your heavy electric bikes onto the bike rack. Now this is on the heavier side for a bike rack. So what might also happen is if you're not planning on taking your bikes out for a ride just yet, you also might not want to take the bike rack off completely, and that's okay. What you can do is fold this up into the compact or the portable position. Remember that lever we pulled earlier? Pull that again, but this time push on the bike rack and then push it up against your vehicle. It's gonna snap into place in this position. Let's take some measurements. The closest point is gonna be over here by our front wheel cradle, and that sits almost three inches away from our car, so plenty of clearance there. The length now added to the back of our car though is gonna be from bumper to where that handle is, about nine inches. It sits further out over here though, and that sits at a little over 12 inches or one foot. So big difference compared to when this is folded down. You'll definitely want it in this position when you're just planning on driving around town, not planning on taking your bikes out, but you don't want to take up too much space either. But what is it like living with a bike rack behind you? Well, notice how our rear window is completely visible, so that's great. Our taillights are visible as well. The big question is, how about our license plate and our backup camera? As you can see, they're not covered either. So that's great because that gives you a peace of mind that even with a bike rack behind you, you can still see the cars behind you and they can see you as well. So the version I have here has a two inch shank. You might see two different racking mounts, two bike platform racks. One has an inch and a quarter shank. The other has a two inch shank. The main difference is whether you can take a tray away, make it a single rack or add one and make it a three bike rack. So check out the product page if you get confused about the differences there. Our version right now has a two inch shank, pops right into our two inch hitch receiver, and we have an anti-rattle bolt. We'll talk about that in a bit, and the lock. So this lock here, you're gonna get two of those. The one up here is gonna be for the cable lock included with your bike rack to secure your bikes. And the second one is for the anti-rattle bolt to secure the bike rack itself. So what's used to tighten down this bike rack is a three quarter inch wrench. I actually use a three quarter inch socket here, makes it faster and easier to tighten down the anti-rattle bolt. To demonstrate how it works, let's do a quick shake test. As I shake our bike rack, back and forth just to simulate that road movement and vibration. <laughs> Notice how I'm really just moving the vehicle at this point. You can see here how secure that fit is between the bike rack and the vehicle, making for a smoother ride for your bikes overall. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage or driveway. My personal thoughts about the Rocky Mountains monorail is it's a really good bike rack. The close competitor or close comparison would be the Kua NV just because of how much weight capacity it has, as well as the wheelbase and the tire size abilities. So you can see that this can carry bikes of different shapes, different sizes. Maybe if the one downside is just trying to figure out which is the best fit for you, whether you want the single bike version, the two bike version, or the three bike version, definitely check out our product pages just to see which one fits your lifestyle a bit more. But on its own, as a bike rack, great bike rack, your Sorento is a versatile vehicle you can have more cargo space. You can carry more people really quickly and easily. That's something this can do too. It can carry your bikes quickly and easily and you don't have to worry about them, especially with those integrated cable locks. So all in all, awesome look at our Rocky Mounts monorail two bike platform rack right here on our 2022 Kia Sorento.